Rob McGlister about the stress test changes that are coming next week. It's not quite the blow that the market got in 2018 when that stress test ramp up sapped about 20% of a purchaser's borrowing power. It's going to be a little more modest this time around. But when we do see these regulatory changes, often you will see people try to get in on the market before they have that purchasing power sap. Let's bring in Devel Morrison, sales representative at Bosley Real Estate. Uh, Devel, great to catch up with you. I want to ask you what kind of activity you have been seeing. I've talked to some people, they said they didn't feel it was a frenzy, but there's definitely some people interested in getting a purchase in before the deadline. What are you seeing? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at first I had some people who seemed interested, but I think once they got the information back from the mortgage broker, they decided, well, you know, they can cool down and wait a little bit. But, you know, it's funny. I was just looking at an email from one of my clients who said, okay, I can do this if we buy it this weekend, but I can spend here if we do it after June 1st. So she's like, let's get out there and see what I can find. All right. So, I mean, it is a weekend, too. The weather's not great, at least in the Toronto area where we are. Uh, but there is yeah. an opportunity, I guess, to get in on the market. Uh, as, as I was discussing with a, a previous guest, the hit this time around is less, right? You're going to stab maybe four, maybe up to 5% of your purchasing power. I wonder if you've heard of this dynamic, too, that some people have told me. There might be some buyers saying, hey, maybe this helps to cool a market that's already cooling down. So then I wait to see. I mean, obviously, you're trying to time a reaction and we're not sure what it's going to be. But is there any of that flavor out there? No, I, to be honest, I haven't really seen anything like that. I mean, the market has slowed down already, so it already is a good opportunity for buyers to not have as many bidding wars, to be able to potentially be the only person per, uh, person offering on a property. So that buying opportunity that buyers are looking for is already there. I think what I find in the in the Toronto market in particular is sometimes buyers sit and wait and think, oh, if it's good now, I'm just gonna wait a little bit longer because if it's good now, it must, it's going to be better later. But I think that nobody can really time the market expertly. And I think the best time to buy is when you can afford to, really. You know, I remember back in the fall when the condo market really wasn't doing very well. And I remember telling people at the time, you gotta get in, this is the time, this is the time. And I think people were like, oh, well, maybe it's going to get a little bit lower for me. So they just sort of waited and waited. And then, of course, the condo market started to pick up again. So to me, I think, you know what? There's a window of opportunity here for buyers, whether you're looking to buy a house or a condo. Things have slowed down. So I think that now is their time to actually get in there and get something. All right, so Debel, we as you said, we do know that the market has been slowing down in Toronto, across the country as well. But prices, they elevated so quickly over the course of the pandemic, and they haven't fallen back at all. When you, when you talk with prospective buyers, I mean, what are their challenges? How, how are they putting their financing together to get into a market like Toronto, where prices are through the roof? Parents. I mean, that, that's really it in a nutshell. The bank of mom and dad is active and alive. I mean, if you look at the fact that more than 40% of Canadians actually don't even have a mortgage on their homes, a lot of those people that don't have mortgages are the parents of the people who are going out to buy right now. So people are getting a lot of help from parents, absolutely. And, and I don't care whether my clients are 20-something, 30-something, 40-something, or even 50-something. I find that lots of my clients are getting parents' help, and whether that's their money or parents are co-signing, it's the same thing. And, you know, I've spoken to some mortgage brokers this week, and, you know, with that stress test, I think that a lot of people, again, they're just going to get their parents to help co-sign. And I think a lot of parents feel that they want to see their kids do well, so they're going to help them wherever they can. Is that basically the re reality of the market now? Because the, 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 the core question that's always troubled me over the years is the rule of thumb is three to four times, you know, your household income for, in terms of a purchase price. And we know that in Toronto, we got numbers like 14, 15 percent at any given time. Is just this the new reality? People cannot make it into a real estate market like Toronto or Vancouver or some of the others on their own. I think that people need to also be realistic. So every time when those numbers are being done, they're being done based on the average you know, house price in Toronto is a million dollars. Just because the average house price in, is a million dollars, it doesn't mean that that's where buyers start. Buyers need to sort of start on the first step of the property ladder which chances are that means buying a condo, um, which is not a million dollars. They can still get a condo for six fifty dollars or $600,000. So there is still that opportunity. I think that that's the one thing that we always forget 
And I think also to a lot of millennials, they kind of want to rush the process and get a house. And I'm like, get a condo first. That's what most of us did. You get the condo, the condo appreciates, and then you can use that appreciation to be, to jump to the next step, to get a smaller house before you move to the big step of a larger house, you know? So I think we need to, I think people are forgetting that there is a property ladder and there's a, a process to climb and people need to climb that process and not expect to get that mansion in Rosedale or Forest Hill on day one. It's like walking into a company and expecting to be CEO on your first day of work. You got to start small, right? That's, I think that's the thing that people need to remember. Yeah, life is long. It does feel like, though every time we tighten a regulation, in this case, the stress test once again, it, it is pretty clear that if you're going to start off in a big city with these kind of qualification hurdles, you're going to start off in a condo. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's what's realistic. But I think what's not realistic is some people expect to start off in a house. I'm like, no, 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 don't be leapfrogging the process. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Right. And yes, of course, Toronto is a, is an expensive city. So, you know, that's, you know, there, we have this expression, you drive till you can buy. This is why, you know, areas like, you know, Oshawa, Durham region have been so popular because the price point is about similar to buying a condo in Toronto. So now you see sort of crazy bidding wars in those areas simply because the homes are cheaper. So people are just going further and further out. And now that you see transit accommodating, um, people are enabled to go further and further out. But, you know, with the pandemic, people have been working from home a lot. And I think that, you know, in the next few months, people are going to be brought back into the city. I've already had a phone call from someone who moved out that now said, OK, you know what, now I actually need that pied terre condo that's right downtown so that when they do come into work for a few days a week, that they have a place to stay. So I think we're going to also see some new trends emerge from this.